हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द फोर्थ वीडियो लेक्चर ऑफ क्लास एट साइंस सो वी वर डीलिंग विद द फर्स्ट यूनिट दैट इज मेशरमेंट सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट डिफरेंट फिजिकल क्वांटिटीज बेस क्वांटिटीज डिराइव क्वांटिटीज एंड देयर एस आई यूनिट्स सो इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर पर्टिकुलरली वील बी लर्निंग अबाउट क्लॉक्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ क्लॉक्स बेस्ड अपॉन डिस्प्ले and based upon working mechanism and we will be learning more about accuracy in measurement so first we'll be looking into the clocks so clocks as we know are used to measure the time intervals many clocks were used from ancient time different varieties of clocks were used in uh, ancient time and uh, revolution happened and then now we are using electronic clocks and atomic uh, clocks scientific modify the clock mechanism to obtain accuracy so all these modifications happen to obtain the accuracy in measuring the time intervals okay so to obtain the accurate time the best clocks were designed by the scientists so some of the uh, ancient time clocks were like a uh, sun dial moon dial hour glass water glass clock towers were used and then pendulum so some of the you can even see in the um, picture also uh, the pendulum is there uh, sun dial is there then uh, you have a digital clock which are used nowadays and then our glass is also there so variety different kinds of uh, clocks were used over a period of time okay so <coughs> in this video lecture especially we'll be learning about two type i mean types of clocks so here types of clocks are based on display and based on mechanism we can uh, divide the clocks which we are using nowadays into two categories one will be based upon their mechanism one will be based upon their um, display type what kind of display they have based upon that we can divide the clocks into analog clock or digital clock and based upon the mechanism on which mechanism they are working what is the working mechanism how actually they work based upon that principle uh, the clocks are divided into or classified into quartz clock or atomic clock okay so these are the different types of clocks we are going to study uh, the differentiation between the clocks are done based upon two things one is on display one is on mechanism okay first we will be seeing uh, the analog clock so here is the picture of analog clock so this is how it looks like so analog clock looks like a classic clock right so it has got three hands to show the time one is hour hand hours hand another one is minutes another one is seconds so we are quite familiar about this it is short and thick the hour hand is the shortest one among the three and it actually rep shows the hour which hour it is and then another one is minute hand it is a long and thin hand it shows the minute what is the minute then the third one is second hand the longest and the thin one very thin one uh it shows second it makes one rotation in one minute and 60 rotations in one hour so one rotation when when a second hand completes one rotation it is one minute when it is taking the second round and finishes the second round it will be two minutes so in 60 when it makes 60 rotations it is nothing but 60 minutes nothing but 1 hour so we are familiar with this clock right okay analog clock can be driven either mechanically or electronically so <clears throat> both types of uh, um source we can give to this one is electronic that is by keeping some shell or some cell something like that or mechanically if you remember <clears throat> the olden age uh, old clocks we need to give the key to it so we have to turn the key and keep then it will slowly rotate and after some time again we have to give the key and all so that is what actually meant by the mechanically driven clocks 
Okay, so this is about the analog clock. It is a kind of a classic clock. Okay, a fancy clock actually. So this is about the analog clock. You all are familiar about this kind of a clock. That's why I'm not going much in detail. Okay, another type in this is a digital clock, which we are using nowadays. So you can uh, have a look. There are two pictures showing uh, digital clocks. Okay, the digital clock displays the time directly. There are no hands, you know, need not worry which is the short hand, which is the long hand, which shows second, which shows minute or such kind of things. It directly give you the value of the time. Like It shows, displays on uh, the board. Okay. It shows the time in numericals or in some symbols. So mostly it will be in terms of uh, numbers otherwise some clocks even uh, we can see that there is a picture of clock and then there are um, what hands will be shown to represent the time and all so some kind of symbols for all are also used but mostly it will be shown in in terms of numbers only so it may have a uh, 12 hours or 24 hour display like uh, after 12 it will be again starting from zero or sometimes uh, some of the clocks will go from after 12 it will be 13 14 16 up to 24 two kinds of things we can see okay recent clocks are showing date day time now the technology has been improved so nowadays we can even see along with the date the clocks will also uh, show the date day month year temperature etc okay so many other uh, details can also be uh, seen in this uh, digital clocks nowadays the digital clock are often called as electronic clocks because it uses mostly the electricity or that's why it will be it is called as electronic clocks okay the this is about the digital clocks these are the two types of clocks which we were which we classify based upon their display one will be having all those hands and all which one shows um, hour one shows minute one shows second another one is a ready-made kind of a food like you just see it you get to know the time that is digital clock okay so these are the two types of clocks uh, based upon their displays so the other one which we saw in the case of classification based upon the mechanism how actually it works based upon that clocks are divided into quartz clocks and the atomic clocks in that first category is quartz clock pardon so these clocks are activated by electronic oscillations which are controlled by quartz crystal so actually this clock will be containing a quartz crystal it is a kind of a crystal uh, this quartz uh, controls uh, the electronic oscillations so based upon the electronic oscillations the times will time will be showcased on the display okay the frequency of the vibrating uh, crystal is very precise so here what actually we are doing is we are uh, <clears throat> providing the electronic oscillations which will be controlled by the uh, quartz crystal when it will be uh, it will be having a quartz crystal which will be also vib which will also be vibrated and this vibration of the quartz crystal will be very precise so based on the frequency of that vibration we will be um, showcasing or uh, we, that frequency of the vibration will help in displaying the time very precisely so more about this wordings like uh, precise and frequency what are these oscillations you will be learning in your future classes but you need to remember all these terminologies like it will be activated by electronic oscillations and which are controlled by quartz crystal so quartz clock contains quartz crystal which will control the electronic oscillations inside the clock okay the quartz clock is more accurate than the mechanical clocks 
so it is better like it is a innovation from the mechanical clock obviously it should have some more advantages that's why we say that it is more precise more accurate okay these clocks have an accuracy of 1 second in every 10 to the power 9 seconds this is about its accuracy so the first quartz clock was built in 1927 by warren marison and j w hartton at bell telephone laboratory okay that was the first clock when it was built it was about first quartz clock then words first quartz watch however was unveiled by japanese watchmaker seiko as the astron in december 1969 so uh, that was about the clock and the second one was about the watch so uh, in your uh, um, watches and then uh, uh, wall clocks even you can see it will be written as quartz so that shows that it is nothing but a quartz clock okay it is not uh, other kind of a clock it is a quartz clock so go back uh, search for the wall clocks and search for the watches and see whether this word quartz is written in your clock or in your watches if it is written then it is nothing but the quartz clock or quartz watch okay here is the picture of uh, quartz clock so you can even it there will be a display will be nothing but a analog display display okay <clears throat> so the principle what actually the principle behind this uh, uh, quartz clock it can we all we know that it contains a uh, quartz crystal so the principle of a quartz clock is the piezoelectric property of the crystal so this quartz crystal has got a special property you need not worry about this word piezo uh, electric property it has got a peculiar property that property has been used to um design this clock so what is this property then so means that when a pressure is applied along a particular axis of a crystal so what to say uh when a crystal is given it will be having different axis so much you need not worry about this this is just to know what actually it is you need not worry about all these things what actually this axis what is this crystal just for information you learn all these things okay so this thing is just for extra knowledge so axis of uh, it will be having different axis of axis of rotation or several kind of things so when pressure is applied in one particular direction axis you just consider it as one direction okay uh, to that crystal an electric potential difference an voltage for example an voltage will be developed in perpendicular axis you are applying pressure in one direction since this crystal has got a peculiar Uh, capacity or talent what this crystal will do it will develop or generate kind of an voltage in the another side that is in the other direction so that voltage will be used uh, for, for creating this um, oscillations so that oscillation will help in rotating the things so some kind of that kind i mean similar to that will be used you can see in the diagram there is a quartz oscillator a thing is represented here that is this one the quartz oscillator is kept so then there are several wheels connected and based upon that it will be rotated so here actually you you might have seen in your uh, watches when you open it lock up on it uh, the watches or the clocks you will see this kind of structure so there will be one uh, cylindrical kind of a thing that is nothing but the quartz oscillator okay no need to worry much about this this is just for your knowledge but you need to know about those four things what is the accuracy and then uh, when was it uh, where was the first 
um, quartz clock was built what is its principle at least the name of the principle and then uh, what else so what actually the quartz clock contain in it and uh, yeah that much you need to know okay the next type is atomic clock so you can see there is a picture of atomic clock these clocks are making use of periodic vibrations occurring within the atom the previous one there we used a quartz crystal right here instead of quartz crystal we will be using some atoms okay those atoms will be have every atom will have periodic vibrations so that vibrations are used for making the clocks see quartz was used so it was called as quartz uh, clock here the atoms are used that's why it is named as atomic clock okay these clocks have an accuracy of 1 second in every 10 to the power 13 seconds the quartz clock had 1 second in every 1 10 to the power 9 seconds here it is 10 to the power 13 seconds okay so these atomic clocks are usually used in your global positioning system that is gps nowadays every mobile will have or most of the gadgets will have this gps that is nothing but global positioning system and uh, global navigation satellite system and uh, international time distribution services so it is the most precise it gives most precise and accurate time that's why it is used in most of the standard uh, uh, what to say device it, it is used in most of the standard devices okay the first atomic clock was developed in 1949 at the us national bureau of standards but it was less accurate than the quartz clock the first accurate atomic clock was which used cesium 133 this was the thing used inside that which was most uh, which was the first accurate atomic clock because when it was built in 1949 it was less accurate than the quartz clock so to make it more accurate than the quartz clock uh, atomic clock which is built using uh, cesium 133 by laws eisen and jack penny in 1955 at the national physics laboratory in uk the first one was built at the us national bureau of standards the next one was built at a national physical lab physics laboratory in uk united kingdom so which was uh, most accurate one so this was about atomic clocks so whenever we talk about any kind of measurement so we come across something called accuracy even when we studied these four clocks we talked about most accurate most precise all those things right so what are this accuracy and precise or perfect or approximate there are several whenever we make measurements we uh, hear uh, we use several wordings like precision accuracy and approximation and a perfect true value real value approximated value all these things what are they okay so more about them we will be learning now so whenever we make some measurement every value of measurement contains some uncertainty so these uncertainties are called as errors right whenever we make uh, we measure the thing i may measure it as something the fellow a uh, classmate may measure it as something else so there will be some errors whenever we make some measurements so they are nothing but the uncertainties which we cannot avoid the differences between the real value and the absurd value is called as error right so there will be a real value the length of the um, given textbook may be 1.73 sorry not 1. 13.73 cm i may measure it as 1 13.7 cm the other fellow may measure it as 13.75 cm 
so there will be a difference the real value is 13.73 cm by i but i measured it as 13 cm there is a difference right that is nothing but an error okay so every measurement will have this uncertainty so that is what the reality is so whenever we talk about um, errors there will be two new words coming into picture whenever we talk about measurements errors the two words automatically follows these things they are nothing but accuracy and precision so accuracy is the closeness of a measured value to the actual value or the true value which value see we will be measuring one length as i said the length of the book right so i gave two set of measurements like one is 13.7 centimeter and 13.75 centimeter so which is more closer the real value is 13.73 centimeter which value is more closer obviously the 13.75 is more closer than 13 centimeter to 13.73 centimeter so most the accurate measurement is 13.75 centimeter the it tells about the closeness of the measured value to the actual value or the true value okay then precision precision is the closeness of two or more measurement to each other how precise like i make some a set of measurement i'll measure the same a uh, length three times and my friend is also measuring the same length three times so i will measure it as 13 centimeter 14 centimeter and 15 centimeter my friend will measure it as 13 13 centimeter 13.1 centimeter 13.2 centimeter okay so in my friend's measurement the difference is very less 0 0.1 0 0.1 centimeter but in the case of my measurement i was it's like one centimeter difference is there so my friend's measurement will be the most precise measurement so i'm telling in the clouds you may not be understanding let us look into an example so set of measurement is given as 1.2 centimeter 1.25 centimeter 1.28 centimeter 1.3 centimeter and the true value is given as 1.26 centimeter so among those four measurement which is the most accurate measurement accurate accuracy is the closeness of the measured value to the true value which is the most closest one it is 1.25 centimeter so we say that the accurate value is 1.25 centimeter okay set of measurements are given one set is measured by me another set is measured by my friend okay the first set that is mine 1.3 centimeter 1.4 centimeter 1.5 centimeter this is one set of measurement for same length okay the second the my friend is measuring it and uh, the person gets it as 1.26 centimeter 1.23 centimeter and 1.25 centimeter you can see the first set has a difference of 0.1 centimeter the second set has got a difference of 0.2 point uh, sorry 0 0.02 0 0.01 so the second set is most closer they all are closer to each other right so the second set is be will be called as the precise measurement they are closer to each other two or more measurements are closer to each other that's why the second set is called as most precise okay so that's about accuracy and precision so whenever in our daily life whenever we make measurements uh, we cannot always uh, take the help of the standard instruments right uh, or so i'm for example i'm cooking okay i need i'm preparing rasam or i'm preparing some um, rice i mean i'm cooking the rice see 
what what exactly how much amount of water should be taken i cannot tell uh, you have to take 1 kg of rice and then uh, you have to put uh, uh, 4 liters i mean 2 liters of water then you have to boil for this much time 20 minutes 2 seconds or 20 min so you cannot have the perfect timings or the perfect amount of ingredients so always you have even observed your mom uh, maybe using like you have to pour one handful or one cup full one cup of water or one cup of sugar or one cup of milk kind of you are not using any standard device you are using one cup or half a cup what is half a cup where is the measurement there is no measurement over there they are not the standard devices we actually use approximation we use approximation based upon our experiences so what is this approximation how exactly it is related to our day to day life measurement so day to day life measurement involve approximations yes that is one kind of an approximation so even when we do the calculations so after decimal sometimes when we multiply and divide and calculate we get so many numbers a kind of a train we get right after the decimal point 7 8 9 numbers will be there so what we do we will approximate it into two digits two decimal units right so such kind of decimal uh, approximations are used in our day to day life and they are acceptable also okay so approximation is the process of finding a number which is acceptably close to the exact value of measurement of a physical quantity so it is a process of finding a number which is acceptably close to the exact value that means the real value so it should be acceptably close to the real value of the measurement of a physical quantity so it is an estimation of a number obtained by rounding off a number to its nearest value so this word we are familiar with rounding off rounding off the things right okay approximations are used on certain assumptions having a specific background and they can be modified whenever accuracy is needed okay so this approximations in science in measurement i am not talking about the the approximation which your mother will do in the case of cooking i'm talking about the approximations uh, while calculating the things in science and doing some experimentations in science so these approximations are based upon some scientific background and they can be modified whenever accuracy is needed okay so the rounding of thing so why actually we use rounding of things i already said so whenever we divide and when we multiply sometimes we get oh when for example 3 by 2 3 divided by 2 when you do that you will be getting 1. Point, how much 1. Point, 3 3 3 3 3 3 and that 3 goes on right it will never stop so it will contain several number of uh, threes after the decimal so it will not stop so in that case and the value of pi actually 22 by 7 so when you actually divide it you will get a train of numbers right so in that case it becomes very difficult to have such kind of number so what we do we round it off to an acceptable value so even in your in our daily life calculators are widely used in day to day life to do the calculations the result given by the calculator has too many digits hence the result containing more digit should be rounded off to acceptable units like when we do this we do in our daily life right the calculator calculation will be followed by 30 digits or 12 digits or 20 10 digits but we actually need only uh, 3 to 4 digits or two digits after the decimal in our day to day life so what we do we will take only those first two digits after the decimal and do the rest of the calculation so that is what actually the rounding off uh, means okay so you cannot actually do this rounding off thing 
without following some rules there are certain set of rules which we need to follow when we round off the given number so the rules are as follows first decide which is the last digit to keep for example after the decimal you want to keep only one digit or two digit or three digit so what is given in the question or what exactly how many digits you exactly want in your answer so decide which is the last digit you leave it the same if the next digit is less than 5 for example if you are given with the number 1.6342 so you have decided that after decimal you are keeping only two digits that is three is the last number which you want to keep i mean only the second digit you are going to keep on so leave it the same if the next digit is less than five which is the next digit it is four four is less than five so you are going to keep this three as three only that is approximation or rounding off will be nothing but 1.63 okay then increase it by 1 if the next digit is 5 or greater than 5 for example 1.6354 again you want to keep only two digits after the decimal so 3 is the last digit you want to keep so after the 3 next digit is 5 which is not less than 5 it is actually 5 so what you have to do you have to increase the 3 by 1 so it will be 1.64 again if you are given with the number 1.636 okay you want to keep again only 2 digits after the decimal so the next digit is 6 so what you have to do 6 is greater than 5 so 3 will become 4 in your approximation so it is approximated as 1.64 okay these are the rules for rounding of the things So round off the number 1.864 to two decimal places. So what is the first step? We have to find out the last digit to be kept. The six two decimal places that is 86. The six is the last digit to keep. So next digit is four. The second step is you have to look for the next to the six that is four. 4 is obviously less than 5 so you have to retain it as 6 only you will not be increasing it by 1 okay so the answer will be 1 point okay this is wrong so the answer will be so this is wrong and the answer will be 1.86 only okay the answer is 1.86 you need you not worry about the answer sometimes the mistake happens okay the answer is 1.86 the next one is round off the number to number 1.868 to 2 decimal places the first step is you have to identify which is the last number or the last digit to be kept that is six right okay so that's your first step okay the second step is you have to look for the following digit the following digit is eight so eight is greater than five or less than five obviously it is greater than five so what we have to do we have to increase the previous number by one so six becomes seven therefore the answer will be 1.87 so these are the some small simple examples how we actually 
uh, round off the digits approximate the things okay so so this covers the whole portion of measurement so that's an end to your first unit measurement so you have to thoroughly go through the textbook once again properly read the things and if you have any doubt once again check to the videos or you will be having it okay and then uh, do the exercises I mean the exercise which is given at the end of the lesson and something uh, uh, titled as things to be remembered is also given where different definitions are also given so make a note of that learn them and then do some numericals which are given in the uh, homework or the exercise portion and uh, thoroughly read the textbook and then do all those things make a proper notes of it so this is about the first unit of class 8 science that is measurement thank you